In this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about collisional cross-sections for interaction. And the general picture of what we're talking about, so we have some atom, say a proton with an electron going around it, and in comes a fast-moving electron with energy 1 half MeV squared, and we end with the atom in an excited state, so the electron is now in a higher energy orbital around the atom, while our free electron now moves away with some new kinetic energy, 1 half mv prime squared. And the atom, meanwhile, has an energy which we'll write as the potential to, to emit a photon with energy h nu. Now previously we talked about how we can relate the cross sections for excitation and de-excitation via the Einstein analog so that we could say that g1 v squared cross section from going from the lower to the excited state, the function of v, is equal to g2, the degeneracy of the second state, v prime squared times the de-excitation cross section, sigma 2, 1, as a function of v prime. So we can relate the cross sections for interaction on both sides of the interaction here, but what we don't know how to do yet is to get one of these cross sections. So we're going to focus on computing the cross section for excitation. So we're going to focus on this side of the equation here. Now it's tempting to want to say on this side of the equation that the cross section for interaction might be the distance at, with the, at which this electron orbits around this atom, which if this were, say, for hydrogen, the radius at which this electron orbits the proton in a semi-classical model would be the Bohr radius. So in that case, it's tempting to want to call the cross section to be something like pi r squared, which in this case would be pi a0 squared. But it turns out we're missing a factor here, which has to do with Coulomb focusing. Coulomb focusing is the idea that we're not just throwing a marble at this atom here, we're throwing a charged particle. This is an electron. And in some sense, this electron is, is kind of like a, a homing missile, in that it's being attracted toward the nucleus of this atom, especially if there's a net charge on this atom. Like if this were hydrogen-like, like, like a, a helium atom stripped of one of its electrons, so that it has a nucleus with a, a net positive charge compared to with a single negatively charged electron going around it, so that this ion has a, a net positive charge, that can help this electron interact with this atom. And even without that, given that this is a charged particle with an electric field, it's not unreasonable to expect that we might be able to shoot this electron a bit farther out from the atom than the radius of this orbital and still have a pretty strong collision with this atom. So the fact that we have to take into account the electric force or the Coulomb force in considering this interaction leads us to the discussion of Coulomb focusing. So let's introduce a new variable here, which is b, analogous to the r up here. We'd like b to be the distance at which we can aim our electron away from our atom and still have it, via the Coulomb force, get deflected to a radius of a0 where it can hit our atom. So we're taking our semi-classical model for the cross-section of the hydrogen atom, and now we're asking how far can we aim outside of that and still have Coulomb force pull our electron down to actually hit that physical cross-section of our atom. So how much is the electric force augmenting the physical cross-section to make an effective cross-section here? And this is the factor that we're going to be looking for, the missing Coulomb focusing factor. So one way we can look at this is via angular momentum, which we know has to be conserved through this whole interaction. So we begin with what is the angular momentum of this electron moving at velocity v? Well, in the beginning, we have the angular momentum is given by the momentum of the electron crossed with its separation from the center of the atom. And the way we've constructed this with me aiming this electron to come in at some separation b from this atom, the way we've constructed this, this actually comes out to be mevb. Now we know that at some point, as this electron falls t down towards the atom, being pulled by the Coulomb force, it'll be over at separation A0, and it'll be traveling at a different velocity, Vf, because it's dropped its electric potential as it comes closer to the atom. It gained kinetic energy that way. So after the Coulomb focusing takes place, 
we're going to have some, some v final that is equal to our initial velocity plus a new velocity component perpendicular to the original velocity that's a result of the Coulomb force. And we know that 1 half MeV perpendicular squared should be of order the difference in potential energies between the electron being far away and in at radius zero, which for a nucleus of charge Z will be Z E squared over A zero. So this tells us that V final squared, because I've said that V perpendicular here is perpendicular to the original velocity. When I square V final, this is just going to become V squared plus V perpendicular squared. It's going to be V squared plus Z E squared over A zero. With a factor of ME, and because this is just an order of magnitude approximation, we'll drop the one half factor. So since I know by conservation of angular momentum, the initial angular momentum is going to be equal to the final angular momentum, ME EF at a radius of A zero, and therefore that B is equal to A zero VF over V, then my effective cross section pi B squared is going to be pi A zero squared times VF squared over V squared. And we have what VF is over here, plug that in, pi A zero squared times one plus Z E squared over ME A zero V squared. So we see that for very high velocities, this mystery factor here, which is what we were shooting for here, the, the Coulomb focusing factor, for very high velocities, this factor goes to unity, which is to say that our cross-section for collisions just becomes the geometric cross-section you'd expect for the radius at which the electron is going around the proton over here. But at lower velocities, that Coulomb focusing factor can actually dominate this entire thing. So this is the Coulomb focusing factor. And we can use our expression for the Bohr radius, a0 equals h bar squared over z e squared me. So plugging that in and assuming we're at low enough velocities that we can neglect our, our plus one factor here, we'll get that sigma one two, which we're approximating as pi b squared, becomes pi h squared over me squared v squared. And there's just one more little detail here, which was that this was a classical derivation. And you can actually improve this model of sigma being pi h bar squared over v squared v squared. There's a quantum mechanical correction factor, the omega factor, going from state 1 to 2 over the degeneracy of the first state. And omega is, is called the collisional strength and is generally equal to 0 below the velocity threshold for causing this, in, this excitation interaction. It goes to approximately unity at the threshold for interaction and then decreases as V increases. That correction factor is generally of order unity, but it does have a slight temperature dependence. So that's our Coulomb focusing factor for collisional cross sections. And you'll recall that when we're talking about collision rates, it was useful to talk about collision rate coefficients, Q12, which was the ensemble average of sigma12 times velocity, averaged over the velocities of all the electrons. And with sigma12 scaling as 1 over V squared, and multiplying in another v, we generally have that q12 is going to be proportional to the ensemble average of 1 over v for all the electrons out there, which in general means that the collision rate coefficients are proportional to 1 over the square root of the temperature, because the temperature sets an energy which sets a v squared, so the square root of temperature is proportional to velocity. So this can be a useful scaling to remember that collision rate coefficients generally scale as 1 over the square root of temperature.